Welcome to Quick Takes with Kevin, a weekly podcast about leadership, life, and ministry with Kevin Ezo, president of the North American Mission Board. Each week, Kevin will be focusing on how pastors can keep their souls healthy in the midst of the demands and challenges of everyday life. Now, here's your host, Kevin Ezell. Hey, I'm Kevin Ezell from the North American Mission Board, here with my good friend today, Troy Nesbitt, who is longtime pastor of Cornerstone in Ames, Iowa, and was the founder and now the leader of the Salt Company. We right. call it. And so, uh, Troy, thanks for being here. What we're doing is we're walking pastors through a book called Replenish and just take a few minutes talking about different topics. And today uh, we're on chapter 21 uh, about death to dancing bears. Hmm. And uh, But that really, the whole chapter is about sometimes pastors feel a pressure hmm. to perform. And, and then sometimes it becomes more about performance than it does people. Right. And so what kind of issues have you had as far as had the expectations of putting on a show or leading in worship in such a way that it's a thing as uh, versus uh, connecting with real live people? Yeah, I, I have to say two things. Um, we, we really do want to be people pleasers, don't we? Right. We like the applause of others, and we always are thinking, what are they thinking about me? Well, yeah. Jesus said, no, that's really dangerous. Right. The other thing I think is huge is we like to aim in and applaud when someone says, well, I'm performing for an audience of one. One, yeah. But they're still talking about performing. Right, right. My son doesn't perform for me. Yeah. And if I get him into that place, I'm a bad father. Right. We have a relationship. And I think the what pastors begin to do is begin to see their heavenly father like their earthly father who they did have to perform for. Right. And they could never measure up. Right. And, you know, I just had a great dad. My dad was a pastor, and uh, he he applauded me when I was horrible. But you know what's, what's <laughs> nice? Your dad uh, was an incredible model of people first. Still is. Paper second. Oh, you know? absolutely. It was all about people. I say paper, performance, anything else. Right. It was all about people. Right. Knowing their names. And he's an incredible prayer warrior. And, yeah. Um, I, I think one story, uh, I mean, if you look at me, you think I'm super athletic. Mm-hmm. Uh, but n- I haven't, but yeah, go ahead. No, yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah. you and I are very similar. So yeah. anyway, so uh, my dad would come to the games and would just be going crazy, yeah. rooting for me. Yeah. And my mom sometimes would have to say, Tommy, yeah. he's not even on the field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he was it, just so uh, proud of me. Right. And, and I think that pastors begin— Or it's slow-pitch softball. You yeah, know? yeah. Right. but they just—we don't have a great perspective right. of what God wants us to be and do, and right. that is first to be his sons right. and to love him. You know? What would you recommend to pastors say, hey, look, in all the business of everything, it is easy to get distracted because that's when you're – and your big shot is to knock out when you right. have the most people together. Mm-hmm. But, but you know, some guys pastor in order to preach. Yes. Some guys preach in order to pastor. Yes. And I'm not trying to weigh one against the other. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, he's called us here to make disciples and to impact people, and, and that takes – those relationships. And so what would you recommend to a young pastor, just kind of summarizing, what's the best way to f- stay focused on people, regardless if you're running, you know, my first church, they voted me in 7-0. <laughs> no. And so seven people, it's pretty easy to stay focused. I call it right. one a day, <laughs> knock out the church, you know. But but how do you stay focused even when it gets to hundreds or thousands? So it's, it's you can still only have so many relationships, right. and you got to... Uh, my focus is always to to focus on the healthy so that the healthy focus on the others. Mm. I, had a, I had a mentor one time said, you know, a foolish pastor is someone who spends 80% of his time with 80% of the people mm. who do 20% of the work and give 20% of the money. Mm-hmm. He said a really good pastor really loves the 20% of the people who do 80% of the work and give 80% of the money. And what he's saying is what Paul told Timothy, you know. Invest in the faithful. Right. And so we want to love everybody, but right. we don't want to give all of our time equally to everybody. Right. Um, and, and so it's, it's about investment and about making that. And what I've learned is if you're a pastor, you do love people. Right. You're drained by the people who are draining. They drain us all. Right. And yet I, I don't have the gift of mercy. I know you have that <laughs> in spades. But there are people in your church 
who are leaders in that gift. And you right. got to make sure to empower the people to do what they're gifted at doing right. so that you don't feel like you have to do all the work of the church. All right. Uh, that's excellent. Well, Pastor, look, I know it's a struggle constantly. I mean, all the demands that you have, but it has to be people over paper oh, and people over performance. So stop the dancing bears, yeah. <laughs> focus on ministry, and make a real difference. 100%. Thanks for joining us for Quick Takes with Kevin. Each week, Kevin will visit with pastors and leaders as they talk about the challenges they face and the lessons they've learned in balancing faith, family, and ministry. Thank you for being with us.